What is up folks, this is Briston from Briston Gaming and we are back with another episode of 7 Days to Die Mods Weekly, the show help figure out what mods are good for you and this week we have a cool week ahead of us where we cover some really cool mods but before we jump anything, like always, I want to take a second and say thank you mod authors for all the cool work you guys do and also thank you community for the support because it does mean the world to us. But now we're going to jump into the mods. And our first mod is the super cool Quiet by Alter and it's just another really cool player model that lets you play an iconic video game character, in this case, Quiet. So as you see, it the uh, the model actually looks really good, very, very faithful to the source material. Uh, this is her with a sniper rifle, which really looks quite good, if I'm being honest. I, I don't like the way the shoulder works, but everything else looks quite good. <laughs> and then, the, you know, of course, the character model themselves, let me actually do this so you can see some some little little boob physics a little bit of a little bit of jiggle a little bit of jiggle for those who like that but all in all being able to play as quiet is kind of cool for me because i just i really liked the character from the uh metal gear series and you know she was a sniper and everything so it fits to have her with a sniper rifle and Luna Bug likes playing like this as well because it makes her feel more badass than she really is. But I digress. It's just overall, it's a fantastic little character model. I think you guys are going to highly enjoy it. But with that, we're going to go ahead and move over to the next mod. All right, folks. So this next mod is the super cool Stay Clear by Extreme Lurker. And this is a fantastic mod that we've been meaning to cover for a long time on the channel because of what it does. And what it does is it turns sleepers respawn off in POIs. So how respawning works in the game is even if you have your loot respawn turned off, you're going to have sleepers respawn at 30 days. That's typically the max. If you have loot respawn at 15 days, you'll have sleepers respawn. It seems to be a window between 10 and 15 days of the loot respawn. But if you have loot respawn turned off, they're going to respawn no matter what at about 30 days, give or take. That's what we've experienced playing through. But with this mod, it shuts it off completely and they don't respawn. We've been up to day 78, I think it was, maybe 80. And we didn't have any respawns in any of the POIs we cleared, which was really cool because... It lets the game become more survival crafting than survival questing and looting stuff. Like, we we didn't run any trader quests. We focused everything on either we had to find it and loot or craft it and really made it to where residences like this, these little POIs, early game were fantastic because we could come in here and clear out all the sleepers and stuff and we made it to where we had a place that we could call um, home or you know come in here hit up a couple hot spots clear it out everything not have to worry about looting everything all at once just clear all the zombies and then move on and come back later and loot what we wanted you know once our game stage had gone up a little bit higher stuff like that if we hadn't opened all the stuff you're gonna better chance of finding better loot it, it kind of tweaks it a little bit but I mean think about it in the real world you know you have a chance of finding something but if you're not opening it you don't know what's in there it's that whole schrodinger's loot thing it, it it exists at either a yes or a no state or both at the same time until you make a determination of what you're going to do of looting or not and i really like that i like that aspect of being able to come into a place like this clear it out and only loot say the kitchen if we're looking for kitchen type stuff you know, we're looking for food, we're looking for uh, drinking water, stuff like that, we're looking for a cooking pot, or, you know, go throughout the rest of the house if we're looking for specific types of loot and hit the main loot. Just depends on how you want to play it. But it is a fantastic mod for that. It's not a, it's not server-side, unfortunately. It is a DLL mod, so everybody has to have it installed. But it's a fantastic mod to play with. But with that, we're going to go ahead and move over to the next mod. All right, folks, so this next mod is a really cool mod, and it ties in very well with the previous mod, and it is the Exclude Cleared POIs from Trader's Quest List by OX Steel, and it's an awesome mod because, like I said, it ties in very well with the previous mod of Cleared POIs Stayed Cleared, but now you don't have to worry about traders sending you back to the same exact POI multiple times 
if you're playing in a small town. So right now we're at a trader where there's really nothing else around us. The nearest POIs that he's going to send us to are quite far away. But it's really nice to have that ability to know that we're not going to be sent to the same POIs multiple times. We're just going to be... Hey, come on, lady. We're just going to be sent to POIs that have not been previously cleared by us. Which can include clearing POIs for the traders. So, you know, you've got the fetch quests. If you don't kill all the zombies in there, then you can go back to that POI. The, that's how the quest works. It has to have a certain sleeper amount that you have to kill to keep them from sending you back to officially having cleared the POI. So you'll notice it with clear quests and stuff like that. It's a certain sleeper count you have to kill. And in this mod, it makes it so those quests or those POIs are no longer viable for quests. So any of the fetch quests you do are progressively going to get further and further and further away. So if you like playing with the trader quests and stuff like that, this makes it a little bit more challenging, especially kind of early game when you don't have a mode of transportation to do, you know, low level um, fetch quests and or low level clear quests. But it's still a very fun mod to play with, with just that that extra challenge it adds of knowing that you've cleared out all the POIs in a certain radius. So the quests it's going to send you on are going to be further out and stuff like that. And there could be bigger POIs to go to, things like that. And it's just a fantastic little spiciness to add to the previous mod. But with that, we're going to go ahead and move over to the next mod. All right, folks. So this next mod is actually four mods or one one mod broken into four packs and it is the age of oblivion decoration pack and it is a fantastic decoration set that's really designed for poi builders or other modders you can have them you know playing with yourself for decorations and stuff like that but really how they're meant to be used i think and kind of even says it on the um the mod pages for other modders to use especially like poi builders and stuff like that but it's four packs, it's it's four mods that we're gonna cover here. And uh, pack one is a dungeon and castle assets. Pack two is amusement park, sci-fi, and misc assets. Pack three is workstation assets. And pack four is furniture, fences, statues, and storage stuff. And we have a smattering of stuff just kind of scattered out that we pulled from spawning in and you see some of them look really good. Like, I really like this guillotine looking thing. I love this chair. Uh, the wheelchair looks really good. I like this light source. Except when you get behind it, it disappears. And I'm not sure why. I think it's meant to be, like, be against a wall. The bed looks really good. These uh, statues are creepy as hell. These would go really good in a garden. You have a nice little lawn chair, a fence, an Iron Maiden. Which uh, um, historically wasn't actually used. A nice little uh, spin the wheel thing. A nice little cage. All in all, it's fantastic. You see a little fire totem there. Really, I really love these things. This goes great in a kitchen just for the, for the ambiance. But you see down the bottom here, we have four helpers. So we have the decoration pack one helper, decoration pack two, three, and four. And when you come in here and you select the shape, you can actually see you can scroll through the different shapes for the different packs. Pack one you see has 168 different shapes that you can kind of scroll through. And then we come to pack two, come on. Pack two has 125 different shapes we can scroll through to take a look at. And some of them look really good. Like the, the stuff night watcher here, that is creepy. That just so, so creepy. Or the, the hollow table. We can find a spot that doesn't have a bunch of crap in the way. Oop. Hit the wrong button. I meant to roll and accidentally hit escape. Come on. Oh, that's gonna take forever. Ah, screw it. We'll uh we'll fly over this way. And drop it down. It just looks awesome. I love that. And then pack three, we have another 73 different items to use that we can throw down. Come on, let me place it. There we go. Weird uh, cloning vat thing. I'm not sure why it has all those animals in one. 
and then pack four has another 176 different furniture items. So all in all, you're getting a lot of items to play with for decorations and stuff if you want to play with them by yourself. Or if you're a POI builder or another mod author, this is a fantastic pack for you to use for decorations and stuff because these are these are awesome like these these look so damn good and especially those people who build the really cool castles and stuff like that with man you can have some some really nice decorations in there there's some very clever poi builders that i would love to see use these assets in building a poi i think it would just look phenomenal but with that we're gonna go ahead and move over to the last mod all right, folks, so this last mod is the super cool Age of Oblivion T-34 tank by Piper McLeod, and it is a one-of-the-kind vehicle. What I mean by that is it is the only vehicle I have ever seen that has movable tracks that move realistically. Now, you see, as we, as we move forward, see that the tracks are actually moving. But once we start doing a sharp turn one direction, the treads on one side will actually stop moving while the treads on the other move to give it the turn. Can't get the angle exactly right so you can so you can see the the full turn. But that's one thing that I absolutely love trying to get the the angle rights a bit bit of a hassle come on there we go come on there we go the treads on the left moved the treads on the right didn't it's very hard to see with the the angle of the vehicle but it is very realistic and it shoots rockets so so long as you have the t-34 ammo in your inventory and you hit q you can actually shoot rockets and uh nice very nice structural damage to the to the ground over there and if we shoot this poi over here we can actually damage the walls it takes a while because you know concrete's kind of tough but we can actually break through it if we shoot it enough and we'll move forward a little bit so you guys can or we'll get stuck in a hole maybe i should have uh, paid better attention to where the hole was and tried to go around it doesn't exactly handle off-road very well, but you see the uh, the wall there has some damage, and we keep firing. We're busting through it. I love this thing. It is so fun to play with. I love all the vehicle mods, but this, like I said, is by far one of the best. Just the sheer look of it, the fact that the treads spin and everything is just super cool. It doesn't have a horn, unfortunately, and it doesn't have lights that I've been able to find. Um, no lights come on or anything, which you know kind of makes sense. So it's not going to be a good night vehicle. But for uh, driving around and mowing down a wandering horde or something like that, it seems to work just fine. Come on, there we go, and we're turned back around. It is very very slow as well. So it is not going to be a speed demon vehicle for you. You're not going to use it to to go fast and joyride around. But if you want something that's, you know, going to let you shoot rockets and kill a bunch of zombies, then this is definitely a vehicle for you. But with that, folks, we are done for the week. Thanks for sticking around. Hope you had fun. If you liked the episode, like, subscribe, all the good stuff. But have fun, take it easy, and we will see you next time.